I mean? Mm -hmm. Good evening, everybody. It's um, open up public hearing for the um, Franklin Planning Board, um, January 24th, uh, 2022. Um, this move, this is also audio and video, and um, we're on Zoom. And we also have a call-in number for Zoom as well, which is 312-626-6799. Uh, and the meeting number is 8301-761-37885. Um, I guess we'll go right into, there's no general business tonight, but we'll go right into the first hearing of 705 for 1256 uh, West Central Street. Um, yep, Amy, we'll, please. We'll need a vote to waive the public um, hearing notice. Okay. Before Make a motion begin. to waive the public hearing notice. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you want me to? If you could, sure. yeah, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so this is a site located at 1256 West Central Street in the Industrial Zoning District and Marijuana Overlay District. Um, there is currently a retail marijuana um, use under the Planning Board Special Permit. Um, from my understanding, they've been open for several months, um, for the past several months. One of the conditions that the planning board did put um, on the uh, in the decision was that only call ahead or reserve ahead clients were allowed to um, make purchases. So they were not the the board had concerns about traffic and did not want to have walking customers as soon as they opened. So they're in front of us tonight, uh, requesting to allow the walking customers since they've been open for several months. Um, we didn't, I didn't have any engineering or peer, peer review since it's just a condition change within the special permit conditions. Um, they have requested, there is a special permit fee of $750. They did request that to be waived. Okay. Well, I guess we'll go to the board. Any of the members have any comments? I'm good with it. You know what Just regarding the request to waive the $750. Um, Amy, the applicant that was before us at the last meeting, um, they paid the $750? They did pay the $750. I gave them the option if they wanted to request um, from the planning board that waiver fee, and they said they did not want to request it, that they wanted to pay it, and they okay. paid it. I personally don't have an issue waiving the fee, so <coughs> that this is an administrative issue that can be tackled pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, I'm Okay, um, um, anything from police department uh, as the operations being run right now on, or any comments from anybody? They, when, when they originally opened, I had received an email actually regarding them and as well as the other um, retail marijuana on Grove Street that they had done a lot of research in the surrounding towns that currently do have retail places open and there was no concern at that time. Okay. Um, does the applicant want to speak or, or no? They're on Zoom. They're on Zoom. If we could, Mr. Chairman, uh, 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 just a few words. I think that covers a lot of it, but my name is Patrick Sullivan. I'm an attorney with an office in Attleboro, and I'm here with, uh, on behalf of Chirag Patel. He's the principal of uh, GTE Franklin. I think that uh, Amy gave a, a good overview there, but in essence, yeah, when we first uh, received this approval in September of 2019, as you know, it had this uh, condition in here for appointment only. Uh, it was always somewhat anticipated that I think the board's position, if you recall at that time, was you know, wanting some security that it, it was going to operate properly uh, and that we didn't just open up the floodgates in essence. And so um, I think that uh, I'm, I'll turn it over to Shrog now and he can speak about the business operations, but I think that they've done a good job over there uh, in ensuring that they're, they're compliant with all the rules and regulations and have worked well with the police department. He has some comments that I think would be worthwhile to share just for the board's informational purposes to understand the numbers of people that are coming in and some of the business logistics, why we feel um, that we could lift this condition without really any impact at all by the nature of it. So if you could share some words, I, I think that would be helpful as well. Okay. Yes, please. Sure. Thank you, Patrick. Um, good evening, board members. Um, my name is Chirag Patel, uh, the principal here at GT Franklin LLC. Um, yeah, so we uh, originally actually came before the board uh, 
uh, previous to this, uh, before that one month period is over. Um, and even during that time and actually till today, um, you know, we had it actually anticipated, I think our, orig our original proposal was uh, 40, 40 customers an hour uh, was sort of the threshold limit of uh, why we requested the appointment only. Um, and at the given time was well, well over two years ago. And um, those are the numbers that we were using um, just to present in front of the board at, at, at that current state uh, back in 2019, I believe. Uh, but currently uh, we're seeing right around 100 to 160, 170 customers a day on average. Uh, that's from our operational standpoint uh, from a 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. window. Uh, so that's well below uh, an average of 40 customers an hour. I think we're talking uh, right around 17 to 18 customers an hour. Um, we, um, you know, just for, for the fluid, fluidity of the operations, we were, we actually initiated sort of on, um, on-site appointments uh, over the, pre the previous month where if, if individuals didn't place the appointment online, we were giving them the uh, availability to book the appointment right as they arrived, just to kind of make the process a little bit easier. But, um, you know, removing this condition, I think will just help a lot because, um, you know, just having the customers to take that one less of a step uh, coming into our dispensary will help a lot and just kind of make our operations a little bit more fluid. Um, but that's sort of the statistics overall in terms of where we currently stand. Um, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer any other questions you have uh, related to operations, uh, even outside of um, just sort of this condition. Um, should you get, should you guys have any questions? Um, that's, that's it for my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody on the board? Comment? I'm good. All right. Can I, do I hear a motion to? Oh, uh, is anybody in the public? Want to speak on it? No one on Zoom? Oh, okay. Uh, make a motion to? First motion be to close the public hearing. You want to close? Make a motion to close You're the public set. hearing first. Then we Second. All in favor? Aye. Now we make a roll call vote. We're going to make a motion to waive the um, application fee, $750. Second. All in favor? Aye. And we make a motion to um, amend the special permit for 1256 West Central Street to remove the requirement to uh, require walk in customers. Mm hmm. Do the roll call vote for the special permit criteria. Proposed project addresses or is consistent with the neighborhood or town need. Greg Rondo. Yes. Rick Power. Yes. William David. Yes. Jennifer Williams. Yes. Beth Whirling. Yes. Vehicular traffic flow, access and parking and pedestrian safety are properly addressed. Greg Rondo. Yes. Rick Power. Yes. William David. Yes. Jennifer Williams. Yes. Beth Whirling. Yes. Public roadways, drainage, utilities, and other infrastructure are adequate or will be upgraded to accommodate development. Greg Rondo. Yes. Rick Power. Yes. William David. Yes. Jennifer Williams. Yes. Beth Whirling. Yes. Neighborhood character and social structure will not be negatively impacted. <coughs> Greg Rondo. Yes. Rick Power. Yes. William David. Yes. Jennifer Williams. Yes. Beth Whirling. Yes project will not destroy or cause substantial damage to any environmentally significant natural resource, habitat, or feature, or if it will, propose mitigation, remediation, replication, or compensatory measures are adequate. Greg Rondo? Yes. Rick Power? Yes. William David? Yes. Jennifer Williams? Yep. Beth Whirling? Yes. Number, height, bulk, location, and siting of buildings and structures will not result in abutting properties being deprived of light or fresh air circulation or being exposed <coughs> to flooding or subject to excessive noise, odor, light, vibrations, or airborne particulates. Greg Rondo? Yes. Rick Power? Yes. William David? Yes. Jennifer Williams? Yes. Beth Whirling? Yes. Water consumption and sewer use? Taking into consideration current and projected future local water supply and demand and wastewater treatment capacity will not be excessive. Gregory Rondo? Yes. Rick Power? Yes. William David? Yes. Jennifer Williams? Yes. Beth Whirling? Yes. The proposed use will not have adverse effects which overbalance its <coughs> beneficial effects on either the neighborhood or the town in view of the particular characteristics of the site 
and of the proposal in relation to that site. Greg Rondo? Yes. Rick Power? Yes. William David? Yes. Jennifer Williams? Yes. Beth Whirling? Yes. We're all set. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We'll move on to a 710 scheduled hearing for Taj Estates, uh, 230 East Central Street. Uh, good evening, <coughs> good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. Um, while Amanda sets up, my name uh, for the record is Richard Cornetta. I'm the attorney for the applicant. Uh, Amanda Cavallari from Gary and Halnan, our uh, design professional. And the Ahmads are here as well, uh, the principals of Taj Estates of Franklin II. Um, we were before the board last month um, to discuss 230 East Central Street, uh, the proposal for redevelopment of that site. We were seeking a special permit for uh, the use for multifamily residential, as well as um, the associated site plan approval. During, the, uh, during that last meeting, uh, we heard several comments from the board members about the size and scale of the project and the associated parking. So we, uh, we tasked our design professionals to go back and to try to re, uh, reshape the site and come back with something that uh, was, uh, was more in line with some of the comments that the board had made uh, while making the project uh, still economically feasible. And so what I'd, before I invite uh, Amanda up to take the board through the revised uh, site plan, I just wanted to point out that uh, some of the unique features of the site uh, will remain, uh, which is the, uh, the number of bedroom account or the number of bedrooms per unit is to remain at one bedroom they're, they're to remain at one bedroom units. Uh, the, the site itself has been uh, the building scale has been reduced in size which has allowed us uh, to address a number of the comments with regard to parking and screening that uh, the plan lacked, the previous iteration of the plan lacked. And also, uh, it uh, provided us an ability, we think, to provide parking that would uh, be more in line with uh, maybe some of the standards that are out there for one-bedroom units. Um, I believe it was mentioned in the uh, peer review comment letter that the ITE standard for uh, a one-bedroom unit might be more in line with 1.2 parking spaces per uh, per unit, and uh, the number of parking spaces that we ha we are now providing, as Amanda will point out, we believe are more in line with that 1.2 per unit. Uh, what I'd also like to do. Uh, is if the board would be so inclined. I have some color renderings of the project to show the elevations. We didn't have that to date. In fact, we haven't shared that with, with anyone outside of our development team yet. Uh, we haven't gone before the design review uh, committee, which we're required to do. But, uh, but this board being the granting authority, uh, we felt, and, and tonight we're trying to come before you and get some feedback. So we felt it probably would be a good idea if you're so inclined. I'd like to hand those out uh, to the board members so you can get a look at what the project looks like um, and how it sits on the site. And while she's handing those out, I, I just want to remind the board that uh, although we are seeking a special permit for use, uh, the number of units that we're requesting is still below um, that which is uh, earmarked as the maximum number of units for this particular site. In this particular uh, zone, uh, it's restricted that you cannot have any more than one, uh, one unit per 1,000 square feet of lot area. In this particular case, the lot that we have is, uh, is about, uh, it's about an acre, uh, which would allow us 43 units under that zoning restriction. Um, but as Amanda will point out, uh, we're, we're requesting uh, less than that, obviously, somewhere in the range of 35 units, so about eight units below the, uh, the, the zoning restriction. <coughs> and, I, and, I, and, and toward that point, I do want to point out where this project is, is unique in, in that it's, there, I know of no other one-bedroom uh, developments that are proposed in the town of Franklin. I may have overlooked something, but I, I, 
I've been doing it for a while, and I, I don't believe that there's a, I think there was one that was approved on Chestnut Street. It hasn't been built yet, uh, but that was, uh, there was, uh, I think that was done through the Zoning Board of Appeals, and it was through a veteran's preference uh, model. Uh, but so this project is, is unique in that it is uh, all one bedroom units. Um, it's unique in that it's located a half mile outside of the center of town. And it's unique in that they're apartment style units. They're not going to be condominium units that will be sold and the rights to the, uh, the common areas or the parking areas being conveyed along with those units. Uh, the Ahmads who will own the project and lease it out, they will remain control over the, the, the occupants that come in there as well as, more importantly, the number of vehicles per unit. So they will be able to, through contract, restrict these this project that any uh, any person renting one of the units would be restricted to one vehicle per unit. Uh, and we could anticipate that the probability with one bedroom units is there may be units that will uh, will not have vehicles. And so they may, there will be excess, uh, excess parking spaces that may be uh, uh, available. But in that instance, the Ahmads will be able to control that because they will control the leasing of the property and they will control what vehicles will are permitted on the site. So with that, I'd like to turn uh, our presentation over to Amanda Cavallari, who can take you through some of the specifics of the revised site plan. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and I, I should also mention, uh, Amanda reminded me that since our last meeting, there was a request had we appeared before the, uh, the Historical Commission, and the applicant did present uh, earlier this month before the uh, Franklin Historical Commission. And I believe a letter is forthcoming if it hasn't already been delivered to Amy's office. Okay. okay. Thank good. you. Thank you, Rich. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, so as Rich was, uh, was stating, I'll go through some of the changes uh, based on comments that we had heard at the last hearing. Um, and the most significant um, change is the reduction in the building size. Initially, we had proposed a 198-foot long by 74-foot wide building or 14,000 plus minus square feet. Um, now we're down to 165 by 74. So we're down about 200, uh, just about 2,000 square feet. And we've reduced the number of units from 41 one bedroom units down to 35 one bedroom units. Uh, so we've reduced it by six units. Uh, we've also uh, modified the parking to accommodate the um, the number of units and we've updated the table that we've also included uh, what was required so it's very clear on what's actually required based on the number of units as well as what we're proposing so there's no confusion um, is what's being provided so if we um, uh, based on what's required with the one and a half parking spaces per unit we would be required to have 53 spaces we're down to we're proposing 36 spaces so that's one more than the proposed number of units we're providing two spaces for our office, which is a commercial space, which is in the front of the building. Visitor parking, we're proposing three spaces. Handicap parking, we're required based on uh, the number of parking spaces. We're providing three spaces, which is required. Um, and then for a total number of spaces that would be required is 55, we're proposing 44 spaces. Um, as far as uh, the work that was originally proposed uh, back in the sewer easement at the back of the, at the rear of the property, that's been moved up based on the reduction in the building size. So now all construction activities, including dumpster pad and parking, are removed from that sewer easement. Um, and then on the landscaping plan, uh, some of the comments were associated with screening on the abutting properties. So we've added screening to the east and east side. <coughs> so, so we've added screening to the rear of the property outside of the city easement, and we've also added screening along the abutter side over here um, uh, to the east of the property. And 
discussions from the board and any further comments, uh, we would make the adjustments. Tonight was more of an update to show that we did hear you um, and that um, pending positive feedback, we'd move forward with addressing the comments from Beta and the town as well as finalizing the drainage design and uh, providing a full set of plans, revised plans with the traffic impact study, which we've ha uh, had completed already and that's ready to be submitted. The architectural renderings, color renderings, we'll be submitting with the upcoming package as well, so everybody will have them in their packet. This is more or less just to provide you with a, a visual of what we're proposing at this point. And we will, um, and I think that's pretty much it as far as an update. Any questions? Uh. Questions? I don't know, questions or comments? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so, I personally, I mean, I think it's great that you reduce the number of units. I agree, first of all, generally that Franklin, yes, needs one bedroom apartments that aren't necessarily sold off as condos or um, there's there's a housing shortage and I, that will, will help just generally the, the town obviously needs that. but. That aside, um, I personally still think that the ratio of parking spaces to units um, is insufficient. If Even if it was 1.2 spots per unit uh, with 41 units, that should be 49.2 spots dedicated just to the units themselves. Um, whether 41 spots are uh, assigned to each unit plus visitor parking plus ADA, uh, parking related just to the residential side of things, um, you know, that alone exceeds the proposed 44 parking spaces in addition to the fact that there's also a commercial um, part of this project as well. So, you know, with 44 parking spaces right off the bat, um, including 3ADA, that leaves just 41 parking spaces for commercial and then where, you know, where is there any potential assigned visitor parking? for either the residences or the commercial um, part itself, which uh, with no tenant identified, it's hard to anticipate um, what the incoming or outgoing traffic may be. So uh, personally, um, while I appreciate the, re the reduction in, in building size and, and number of units, I still think we're getting closer, but not quite there in terms of um, required parking ratio. I think it's hard to make the argument that any significant number of units in this location are not and not it is not going to have a car at least one you know one car um, there may be unique circumstances but this isn't right downtown you know it's still over half a mile to the train station um, and all the amenities that you know you hit downtown a half a mile but you know you've, you've got to walk to get there and then drive everywhere else in Franklin so um, I think it's possible but it's hard to bank on that. Um, so that's just my personal uh, commentary. That's all I have for now. Okay. Yeah, I'll just add to that and say I, I think it's a big assumption to think that only that everyone in that, that building is going to have a car. Um, it's so close to Shaw's, Starbucks, Big Y, uh, Honeydew. You could be an elderly person in there and it's a perfect uh, location to get around, get all your groceries, get whatever you need to do. Maybe you don't have a car, so I, I don't know what the number would be that would be sufficient. I think uh, 1.2 is reasonable. That gives it, brings it to 42 it's with 36 units, 35 units. So we have 35 units. We have 36 spaces that are allocated just to the residents. And then there's, uh, what did I say, four, I said three, uh, three visitor spaces also. 42, right. I misspoke, sorry. So 42 plus ADA plus visitor plus commercial. Yep, and we had two allocated for office, which is based on the square footage. So we're providing the required amount for that as well. So the three handicap for ADA, three visitor, two office, and then 36 for the 35 units. Just one more comment. Sure. Yeah, the other thing I wanted to point out is we've we recently had a couple of meetings and we passed the housing production plan Franklin, which is really geared towards um, affordable housing and uh, commuter-type housing, things like that. And 
and I think uh, this is the first step, the first application we've had um, going in that direction. And I think we send the wrong message if we don't at least give it a, a, a good look. Follow up on the comment, actually. Go ahead. If you don't mind, um, I don't disagree that we shouldn't give it a good look, but I think that the density might be a little too dense. Um, that maybe taking a look at uh, a few less units. I think you've done a good job at taking a first crack at it, and appreciate that. Um, I think uh, is it 12 Uncasav, which is right next door, is um, the same, just about the same size lot as yours, one acre, about and has 12 unit apartment building on it. So 15 units, I think an acre is the density minimum for MBTA communities. Um, you know, considering I know it's a minimum, but you know, this just seems a little dense for me. It seems to me that you're, you know, maxing out the impervious coverage in a water resource district, bringing the pavement right up to your butters um, with a fence that's what, how far is that from the butters kind of to the east? Property line is 20 feet, maybe. The nearest house right there. Um, with the parking spaces, how far is that? Nearest parking Which space. Is it? it would be helpful to have the houses shown on each of the pages. So they should be on. They, if they're not on there, they'll be on the resubmittal. Oh, um, I know we did put yep. them on. Um, as far as the density goes, um, I know we did. Um, the density was based on the zoning board bylaws mm -hmm. for one. Uh, one unit per thousand. Yep. Um, so that's where. Sure, I understand that. That's where we had based our density off of, and mm -hmm. as well as the um, economic review. Sure, I understand. You're asking for a special permit, I think, in this zone, and it's just my personal opinion that it's for me. It seems dense. Mm -hmm. Kind of wedged between some single-family homes that are, you know. And trying to put a, a nice looking building, but um, it just seems like a lot wedged between what you're putting it between with all the impervious and parking. And I appreciate your landscaping, however, you have some everybody's replacing a whole bunch of trees, so um, and maybe three street trees out in the front. Is there any way to supplement with some additional plantings that are more tree like, for the <coughs> matching the existing trees that are there? We can look at the versus some um, giant aprovites. Um, seems I, I know you've done some work to put some plantings in there. Just maybe some additional larger. Your neighbors are right there. Um, and then uh, your special permit criteria for no noise and things to that extent. Your dumpster in the back there. Um, when do you plan on having a dumpster empty? Because you've got abutting residential uses. You're going to have a new dumpster being unloaded and emptied. What time will that be happening? It looks like a little bit of light spillage, so just being considerate of your neighbors. Um, then, so DPW did have some comments, and with the plan as it's shown, can his can can DPW's comments be addressed in your current configuration? So moving things to the back of the lot can be, can be addressed. And that's something that we'll, um, we'll look at as far as the design goes. I know we did do some soil testing out there, uh, and there was some soil, um, I guess, uh, non-compatibility, so to speak, um, that may prevent us from putting it back there. Um, as far as maintenance goes, um, in the event that something needs to be maintained on that, that that's something that would be, uh, the, the residents would be notified by the property owner um, prior to anything being taken place, and construction plans would need to be in place uh, as far as making sure that the site's safe. Um, so, you, so you would have to, if you can't move the infiltration system to the rear of the property as requested, mm -hmm. you would have to have all the residents on the eastern side of the property be removed from the property in order to accommodate maintenance? Typically for construction, um, any type of maintenance or construction, that, that stuff would be timed properly with the neighbors just to least impact them. Um, 
So that's something that would happen at the time of maintenance. It's not something that the entire parking lot would be <coughs> left up all at once, that they would still have to maintain traffic flow, just like they do on one-way streets or anything else if there's an emergency, um, to make sure that emergency vehicles can access the property. So it's part of the construction scheduling. Um, I know there are several uh, properties in town that have to have a schedule set up prior to construction to notify any of the residents um, or any even with office buildings um, at the time of maintenance, reconstruction of parking lots, paving, that they have to accommodate the, the people that reside there. Um, so that's something that would take place. Those systems at most as far as a maintenance, um, these systems are intended to last. Uh, it's, um, you know, as far as sediment and anything else that would be going down there, you do have the catch basins before they lead into that. So the odds of having to maintain that on a consistent basis or uh, completely excavate it to disrupt the residents is fairly slim. A couple more questions, I'm almost done. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I know the parking table and the use for parking is the same commercial versus um, you know office space. Mm -hmm. And on the plan, you know it's you know uh, in your size of the space, it's office slash commercial, and then on the space, it's noted it's commercial. I'm just curious because it is a big difference if you have an office space or a commercial space, the number of cars coming in and out of this parking lot. So if it's commercial, and you don't know what the use is and the number of parking spots, which to what Jen said, and the traffic that's gonna be going in and out of this particular location and office space is very different than a commercial space. So I think that's really important to know whether you plan this to be an office or a commercial and clarify on the plans, whether it's office or commercial. And again, that's gonna impact, I think, what, what happens here for parking, whether they're one bedrooms or not, you're still gonna need enough parking to have employees that might be at an office or a commercial space. You're going to need enough parking for, you know, people coming to a commercial space. If you're going to have a commercial space, even if it is only 800 and some odd square feet, you're going to have people coming out if you're having a commercial space. So more than two spaces, I think, just three spaces is probably needed. Okay. Go ahead. All right. I just want to uh, clarify. I'm sorry I misspoke. Um, so 35 units plus 480A plus two spaces for commercial brings us to 41. You've got 44 proposed spaces there, so to Beth's point, that's three available spots for visitors of any type. Um, so one question I have for the owner of the building is, are you planning on assigning those 35 spots to each unit? And then how really are you going to control the visitor parking situation with only three spots for all those units and or three spots for people coming in and out of the commercial, the retail or office space um, and monitor it and make sure somebody, you know, even if it's a one bedroom unit, uh, if there's two adults living there, somebody's not consistently parking in a visitor spot and all of a sudden those visitor spots aren't available because <coughs> another person's living, you know, there's, o there's more than one person oftentimes living in a one bedroom unit. It's not just necessarily a single person. So um, I totally agree with Rick. Um, there's flexibility here and not, and not necessarily getting up to 1.5, but I think we just need to be realistic in the reality of um, the number of units plus commercial or retail space or office space plus visitor plus ADA um, in getting to the right ratio that's not gonna impact neighbors or uh, find people struggling to find parking um, in an area that is already very congested um, beyond the site itself. So that's all. Thank you. You have one more comment? Yeah, I have um, a comment. Amanda, I just, drawings look good. Probably the only one that likes them, but um, <laughs> uh, I didn't speak yet. I know, <laughs> The, um, I'm a little confused, but I, I'm just going to kind of throw this out there. The front of the building is not showing, um, showing the flower where the bike racks are. And then you go to page four, 
and it shows a um, hut top around the front with a car parked on the right side of the building. So my thought is, if we're needing more spots, or is, is there a way that the building can be, be pushed back somewhat and generate this drive to pick up a couple of more spot, parking spots on the right side of the building? I mean, I know that there's, is that an easement on that side also? That's uh, Hill Ave. Um, right. But there's also, as far as the front, I believe there's a parking requirement that you have to be a minimum, no parking within, I want to say 10 feet of. Um, well, I'm not saying on the front of the building, but where that, uh, you, you know, the flower bed uh, is. I mean. Over on this side? I, I really can't see that. I mean, there's, there's actually <laughs> no light there. There's no light. I know there's no side. good place to put it. He's looking at page two on the colored rendering. Yeah, on page two, it, it shows where the bike rack is there and the flowers. I mean, is there any way, like I say, you know, if the building could be pushed back, um, I don't know, 10, 15 feet. Push it to the rear. To the rear of the site. Yeah, the rear of the site. Yeah. And, and to generate uh, another drive to pick up a few more parking spots. But, I mean, that's just a thought. We'll take a look at that. Yeah. I mean, it just, you know, I mean, even if it's, you know, the, again, if they're going to be designated parking spots to each unit, then obviously those on that side could be designated to the units that are there. I don't know, you pick up two, three, uh, just, a, just a thought. And, and, and of course, by pushing the building to the rear, it's going towards the snow storage. Um, you know, you could be moving the parking spots in the rear into the snow storage, which, you, you know, looks like you have ample amount there. And, you know, again, just a thought. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry. Go, no, go ahead, Jay. No, go ahead. So, uh, just two things in uh, One, uh, have you explored at all the uh, ownership of the paper road, like obtaining ownership of it? Uh, yes, I can let Rich answer that. Because yeah, I mean, that might provide some of the parking that. Yes, that is, uh, we do know this, uh, that it is not a public way in the town of Franklin. It's not an accepted or a, a roadway that has been deeded <coughs> to the town. Uh, we've looked at uh, the, the derelict fee statute to see if the owner of the property has any rights to the halfway point of the roadway. And we've also, uh, we're actively investigating securing uh, rights, legal rights, to that roadway. So we're, we're, we're looking at it from two different perspectives, but we do know that it is not owned by the town. So and does that uh, potentially provide some opportunity to add it in that area? Or not? It may. We're looking at that area exclusively for grading at this point, uh, but certainly we will take uh, Mr. David's comment uh, to our design team and take a look at that and see if there's any opportunity there beyond uh, just the grading. So I guess the other comment would be is uh, I'm kind of on the other end of the density thing. I would put all 44 units on this site. Um, but that, that comes from probably a different experience of living in family, uh, starting a family in Franklin than uh, other people have had. Um, so have you explored potentially using parking under the building? Uh, is that, uh, I'm not an architect when it comes to the stuff on out of my league, but would that kind of allow you to get back to the 41 units, but also increase the parking on the site and kind of satisfy some concerns, but also increase the uh, economic feasibility on the applicant side? We, we have looked at that, uh, but you know, as you know, with doing that, uh, the, the, the height of the building would be larger, and we're trying to keep the scale and balance that with the neighborhood, given some of the comments that are made by the other members. Could you extend the building uh, towards the south and accomplish the same? Again, we've we've got that uh, we've got that very important town easement that's back there as well, mm -hmm. and so we're trying to keep you know. And there are residential properties to the south, so we're trying to 
you know, and that was one of the comments that we felt was that, that had merit uh, during the first meeting was, look, you know, there are folks in the South, can you, can you respect that? And so we tried to uh, do that with this new iteration. Um, and so, but I certainly can appreciate you know what you're what you're thinking. We were we we're kind of having the same conversations. Uh, we're trying to avoid going to the four story, even though I know that there are active conversations uh, within the town right now talking about uh, you know in this particular area, uh, which would include this property. Uh, you know, allowing that uh, that that building height without a special permit. That is not the case now, uh, but I do know that conversations are ensuing and meetings are planned to discuss these very topics. So I appreciate your, your comment. Yeah. yeah, so I guess that's it. And then uh, while I do agree that the density could probably be a little higher, I don't like the idea of 1.2 spots. I think that's going to be a nightmare, especially with, there's nothing there to park anywhere around. There's not even a public way that you can really park on safely. <coughs> that's it. Yeah. Um, I, I, most members hit a lot of my comments of parking, number of units, size of the building, easements, um, the proximity to the to the street. I believe is what 21 feet off the off the edge of the road, three stories tall. It's going to be rather bold when when you're walking down the street. Three stories in front of you is going to be fairly quick. Uh, to to Willie's comment. Do you have the ability to push that building back so it looks somewhat proportional to the lot a little bit? Um, I know the other houses are right fairly close, but you're walking literally next to this one, and I think it, it may just jump out. Yeah, I just want to make sure it looks like it's in proportion to the, to the neighborhood as well. Um, I guess you heard, the, obviously, the comment about the parking number of units. Um, Looks like snow storage. Looks like you have most of the pots and pieces for that. So um, I, I will defer to um, DPW, Mike, if you have any comment as of now um, for the time being. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, I, I, um, we did review this uh, revised plan, had a couple of comments, but they've pretty much been addressed one way or the other. Basically, everything's been moved out of the, uh, ease, the sewer easement in the rear, so that's been gone. The overflow from the uh, previous design drainage system that um, had an overflow at the rear of the property adjacent to some of the residential properties that's been eliminated um, and our other comment had to do with the location of the uh, underground infiltration system blocking the access to the site if anything of that happened there um, but they do still have to uh, complete the design the uh, still want to design in this too so we'll be looking at that on the next mission okay. and um, beta Gary, you have any no, I'm, unfortunately, it wasn't given to me for uh, okay. review because they, they really hadn't resp tried to respond to okay. any of the comments. This was something that was just going to be just presented to the board sure. for the general. Yep. Mm -hmm. just okay. um, uh, actually, Beth had just a question. Is it three stories or is it four with the dormers? Is it be livable space with the dormers on the proposed architecturals? It is three stories. I know the dormers appear to be another level, but uh, uh, our architects tell us that that does comply with the height requirement. What that would be is like a, uh, a vaulted ceiling in one of the rooms. Those windows that you see on those dormers are not, it's not, it does not indicate another floor. If you don't mind me asking, what would be the height that you to your center line? Is I don't, for the uh, bridge I, I, I have? We, well, it's, it would, it would comply. Okay. It would comply with the, with the height restriction in town. The chair, can you just add the height onto your, your table? Because I think you have three stories, but you don't have the height on there. So, yeah. okay. great, thank you. Uh, and uh, I guess we'll go to Amy for uh, planning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I know I, I did provide a comment letter um, indicating a lot of this stuff has already been, been discussed. I do want to let you know that um, after this stuff went out, we did receive a traffic study from the applicant, so it's not in the packets tonight. Um, so, at any time, the board wants to have Beta take a look at that traffic study, we can do it now, we can do it when we get final agreement on the units and, and the layout of the plans. So we can go about it however the board would like me to um, get Beta on board to review the traffic study. Um, so I think um, we, Hill Ave was touched on. I had recommended that. I know that they were doing some grading work on Hill Ave and if they are possibly looking for a parking area, they should provide some type of legal information that they are legally 
able to work in that private way. I do confirm with Mr. Cornetta saying that it is not a town owned street. Um, and it has never been constructed, that road. Um, I, we had mentioned putting the button houses on the site plan as well. Um, I didn't know these were coming in tonight, so it's kind of the color renderings, because I, I think when we look at it, especially when you look at page two, you get a side of the building facing the street, where when you drive down that street, you see the front of everybody's houses, and now you get to see a side building. and I, I mean, I think making it a little bit more looking like in front of a house instead of a side of a giant apartment building might. Um, but that's just my first comment. I think it still needs to get some ideas from design review. Um, there's also other ways of just not making it look so flat, making it kind of look more like multifamily housing than just a, a, an apartment building. But we just got this tonight, so it's kind of hard to put all the comments on there. And um, I think that's that's what I had. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Did when um, they schedule for design review? So as far as moving forward, again, we really wanted to get some feedback tonight uh, before we scheduled any further meetings with design review or um, you know finalizing the plans. So receiving the feedback tonight. Um, the color renderings, these will be, um, whether they're adjusted or not, but uh, or they're the same, they'll be in your next packet. Um, this was more so just to give you an inside look um, before we move forward. Mm -hmm. um, so we will provide these formally in, a, in the next packet along with the traffic study. Um, however, the clients, um, if the applicant's amenable to the, to beta starting to look at the traffic study ahead of the next submittal, that's, something that we want to discuss um, before that gets authorized. Just, to, again, to minimize the reviews and the time that Beta's looking at it, that they can kind of look at it all at once. Um, so something to, to think about. Yeah, I think the applicant would like um, to review it. We would want to Okay. Okay. Good. Yep. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, may I ask yeah. a question regarding the traffic study? Does the number of units impact the traffic study? Is there a determination that the board is going to move forward with the proposal as it's submitted, or are we asking them to reduce it further? Well, based on what we're hearing, it sounds like it needs, they're looking, board members are looking to have it to reduce a little bit. I would say maybe take a peek at possibly reducing it if you could and adjust the parking, and then that, that will trigger the traffic. If, uh, if I'm hearing everybody correctly. For me, it's less about, I mean, it, the number of units and more about the ratio of parking to number of units plus commercial slash retail or office space. Yeah, one, one kind of triggers exactly. the other. That's the problem. So yeah. You know? um, Mr. Kinnard, if you well, I mean, we obviously, uh, you know, I don't want to nail anyone down for a specific number, but if you could give us a, an indication. I mean, we are at a point where the project, it, the economics are being stressed. So uh, at some point, you know, we can't go much lower. And, you know, we felt that this number was a reasonable number based upon, uh, you know, a lot of the dimensional requirements. Uh, we, you know, where the height is where it should be, albeit it is a bigger building that's there now. But, folks, this is a commercial area, and this is going to happen. Uh, you know, I, I grew up here, and Franklin is a different town than when I was a kid, and, uh, and it's going to be a different-looking town. And, in another 10 or 15 years. So to, to try to uh, judge a redevelopment of a site by maybe some of the older homes that are in and around them with no respect to those residents, but that's, you know, this is a commercial corridor. It's a, it's a half mile outside of the town center. Um, and, uh, and we believe that, uh, you know, we're not infringing on any of the zoning dimensional requirements. We're not asking for any relief or any variances <coughs> from those requirements. Um, I believe we, we can certainly make a compelling case that the number of parking spaces that we're proposing is going to work for this project. And, I'm, you know, we certainly can sit here and debate, you know, with 35 units, is it likely or probable that any one of those units will have uh, occupants that might have more than one vehicle? Certainly. But I think it's just as equally probable that you will have unit owners, uh, to Mr. Power's point, that will not require a vehicle. 
because of age or because of economics. And the location lends itself to be a pedestrian friendly uh, residential property. And as I mentioned earlier at the top of our, our presentation, we have a unique situation here because the owner owns the entire property. And the owner is going to control the number of cars that enter and park at this site. And yes, there will be uh, there will have to be uh, some kind of maintenance of that as, as going forward. And certainly, uh, I don't believe we have any objections to that being mentioned in the decision because that is the intent of this project is that it's not going to work uh, if there are more cars than there are parking spaces. It's not going to, it, it will not lend itself uh, to, uh, to the occupants and it won't, certainly won't lend itself to the town. And this isn't a part of town where you've got some side streets that there's friendly parking that you can maybe go hunt out uh, for, for a uh, overnight. That's not gonna happen here. So we need it to work. And so, and the, the owner of the property will make sure it works. Um, so, so we do feel strongly uh, that the number of units that we are proposing, even with the small commercial space that's under 1,000 square feet, is going to work here. Um, and, and as I mentioned, not to put uh, Beta on the spot either, but in their previous comment letter, they do mention the, the ITE standard uh, for one bedroom units as being uh, uh, 1.2 uh, spaces per unit. And I think, uh, we have a unique opportunity here with a uh, project that, uh, you know, because there's not many projects that you're going to see that uh, the applicant is committed to one bedroom units. Uh, so we, we hope uh, the board recognizes that and we don't lose an opportunity here. Thank you. Um, I guess we'll go to anybody in the audience if anybody has any comment or anybody on Zoom. Oh, just yeah. approach the mic. Name and address, please. Yes. Uh, my name is Mark Ravani. My mother lives at 240 East Central Street, was the direct east abutter to this. And uh, I would just like to make a couple comments. Uh, first of all, it's not a half mile from town, as was brought up before from the train station. Um, they're talking about um, older people. The, the prices that were brought up were not considered to be affordable housing for a one bedroom. Um, these, these, this, I know that it's a commercial <coughs> area. Right, and on 140, um, like they brought up the houses are close to the street. But when I moved, when I lived there 40 years ago, Star Market was a dirt parking lot and the street was much further to the other side. Right, there was nothing there. We have never complained. It's not, we're not here to make waves or to, to not let these people do what they want. <laughs> I actually build houses for a living. It's not my intent to, to stop things. But to put these 35 units in, I know it's commercial, but the entire neighborhood behind it is not. Right? And all these people, when they go to leave, since I've been in you know, those houses for 43 years now, when you come out, the only choice you will have is to go right. When you take a right and you want to go to center of town, you will go down Crocker Ave. I mean, you will go down Lewis Street to Crocker Ave, come back up and around Summer Street. It's basically your only way to get out of that. So to put those 35 units in, you now have those 35 plus houses in that back neighborhood and I'm talking about a, a Franklin neighborhood that you probably grew up in, right? The, the, the car comes, oh, car, we pick the net up and we move it out of the street and the car goes by and we go back to playing hockey or basketball or whatever. Um, so to say it's a commercial area, it is, but those houses are interlocked into that neighborhood behind. It is not what you would consider commercial for those people and those neighbors, those kids that grow up there. It's, it's their neighborhood. It's not, you know, the back parking lot of Star Market. Um, that's really all I have to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Amy? We do have... Oh. Um, Another gentleman as okay. well? I do have someone on Zoom when, okay. when we're ready. My name is Mark Letourneau. Um, Abutton property uh, is to the south, the Irwin, Irwin property. My my wife Kelly and I own. Um, the, some of the updates, you know, push, um, reduction, redu reduction, some of the landscaping, I get it, that's great. Um, but the discussions about bringing it back um, is a little concerning because it's kind of undoing some of the changes they did make. Um, the uh, also, just question regarding 
if they use utilize Hill Ave, the, the paper road part of it, um, I'm just obviously a concern whether it, it would be going through. That would be uh, a real concern because that neighborhood couldn't handle cars coming out there. Um, I know that's not in the plans there, but when you start talking about opening that up, that's a concern. Um, right after on Hill on Hill Ave, there's a spot, a bottleneck where you can't get two cars past each other. So you couldn't open up that many units for that. Um, you know, similar comments on the units. I think it's, it's high, um, but uh, the the question I have, I guess, question or comment I have regarding, I don't know the traffic set. I don't know how that's done, uh, but is the um, when you when you're using the traffic study with this development, are you considering the impact that's not that we don't currently see with um, the new construction going on? Is that that's included with that? Okay, all part of it. All right, all right. Excellent. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, in um, a gentleman before me um, presented some other comments that I agreed with, as well as the board. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe somebody was on Zoom? Yep, we have um, Kobe on Zoom. Let's see if he wants to unmute. Yeah, thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I wanted to uh, commend a, a lot of the comments that have, have been made um, and some of the, you know, we, we've already made some uh, improvements uh, on this property, especially around you know, design. What does this look like? What's the experience uh, going through Franklin around landscaping, uh, around you know, density, around traffic? I think those are all uh, very key points and I you know, commend you guys for continuing to stay after that. I'm gonna only speak uh, to, to one item uh, which is parking, and that, and that is to say that I, I really hope that we don't uh, demand a, a, any larger uh, parking ratio uh, than we do. You know, at, at the end of the day, Mr. Cornett is right. Like, it, it's their responsibility, it's the owner's responsibility to find uh, people that are willing to uh, accept that. But as we add parking, uh, that's not only impacting our stormwater is not only impacting the look of the space, uh, but it costs money to uh, maintain, to construct, uh, and you know to pay for for that land. And that money is get, gets passed on uh, in in the form of rent. And so, as we talk about housing affordability, um, overburdening uh, people for the sake of uh, demanding that they have uh, cars uh, seems unrealistic. I mean, the 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 town is moving. Uh, in this direction, uh, a space that's half a mile from all basic necessities uh, with public transit, with a, with a Gatra bus that can get you anywhere uh, you need to go, and you're able to walk to all of your basic needs, uh, including getting into uh, in and out of the city. Uh, this is the sort of space that we need to not be over-demanding um, uh, parking. So, uh, again, commend a lot of what you're uh, pushing for and, and uh, continue to, to make it be better and, and uh, you know, especially from a design standpoint, just please, please, please uh, don't over demand uh, parking um, and don't let it fail for that reason. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Just approach the mic. Robert Delaco, 7 Wilson Road. I mean, if you're gonna have one bedroom park, one bedroom's 35, 35 units, you gotta figure two people in each unit. That's what you gotta figure. There's no way a young couple's gonna move in there. You're not gonna have one person move in there. Even if four people move in there, it's gonna be a lot more than 35 cars on that property. And then what are you gonna do? You got people coming off of the new project, you got people coming off of this project here, it's gonna be a nightmare down 140. So it sounds like there's still some concern, quite a bit of concern about parking, size, number of units, traffic. Um, I think maybe Mr. Connecticut can sit back and talk with your client and see if there's any leeway in there to help if you want to make this work as well. I mean, it's a good project. We need one bedrooms. So Mr. Delaco's comment, yeah, you're probably going to have two people in each unit. We, we just don't want the overflow of all the additional parking all scattered as well. Want to make it a safe site and um, just want to make it work. So 
as do as do we. Uh, that's the last thing we want to do is yep. create a project that's going to be overflowing into onto East Central Street. That's just not uh, it's not doable. It's not workable for for either party. Um, we'll we'll discuss it amongst ourselves, and certainly uh, you've uh, you've given us a lot to think about tonight, um, and and hopefully uh, some of what we've said will resonate with you. Uh, as well, so that we can work together to try to try to get this uh, get this project uh, moving forward. So we'll be back sure. um, uh, with a particular date. Uh, I know you guys are getting busy. Um, Amanda, I'll defer to you on this. You're preparing most of the uh, the, the information. Uh, so. you have room for us. February 7th is the next public hearing. When is it? February, February 7th. February 7th, that give enough time to? Yeah, I think it's important that we we all think about uh, what the right number is and, uh, and then maybe we can uh, come to some kind of a consensus between us on the 7th. Sure. Okay. I think you're very close. Yeah, okay. I think you're close. Thank Great, you. thank you very much. That Thank you. So continue to. Yeah, we need a motion, motion to. Motion to continue to February 7th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. to our next scheduled hearing, which would be for uh, Washington Street. <coughs> Flex space. Ready, Mr. Chairman? Sure. Go All ahead. Right. Good evening. Rick Goodrow with United Consultants. Here this evening with me is Peter Genta and Bill Hummel. And Rick Almeida was here. All our principals of the proposed project located off of Washington Street. Um, so what I wanted to do uh, is kind of update the board as to where we're at. Uh, we've made revisions to the plans based on comments we had received at the last hearing from the town engineer from the planning department, as well as from Beta. Um, and also wanted to give you an update as to where the project stands with respect to the other boards. Public hearing has been closed for the Zoning Board of Appeal with respect to earth removal, and the Conservation Commission uh, closed the public hearing last Thursday and voted to issue an order of conditions for the project. Uh, just to update the planning board with respect to those uh, other permits. So uh, we do have a basic rendering of the building here uh, that we wanted to share with the board. Uh, we had, I believe we had submitted some renderings early on in the process, but this is an updated rendering uh, that we wanted to share with the board. So to start off with, we get a general feel for the building. Any specific, you know, comments with respect to colors and whatnot, we can certainly have uh, Bill Hummel speak to. But again, this is a basic rendering. We'll have access doors for pedestrian access into the building, and then overhead doors for access into the, into the warehouse uh, portion of the building, if you will. So again, that's a, a general overview of the building. Uh, <clears throat> what 
I wanted to do was <clears throat> go over some of the changes that we've made and some of the discussions that we've had uh, with respect to the project. And I wanted to, to just bring everybody up to speed uh, a little bit about the project layout and its um, situation within the, a uh, neighborhood uh, where, where the project is supposed to be located. So we hope to best accomplish that by providing this color rendering of the site plan. So what we've depicted is the three proposed buildings in purple here. There are five buildings located on Washington Street between the project and the Washington Street area, if you will. Those five residential houses have been highlighted in purple. What we have What we have heading from the south, where the project entrance would be, is we have an existing house um, that is approximately 79 feet from the property line, and our project will abut that residential house uh, property. As we head further towards the north, there was a remainder strip left when the development of these lots was done in 1913. This development strip was actually laid out on a plan, as I said, in 1913, and it was reserved by a Walter Ward. There's no records of Mr. Ward conveying that property to any of the budding properties. And further, we've looked at the Town of Franklin Assessor's information, and they don't have any records of any ownership of that parcel as well. So the importance of that is that there is an approximately 50 foot wide strip of land between our project and the four remaining houses as we move northerly along Washington Street heading up towards the Interstate 495 crossing with Washington Street, just to give you a point of reference. <clears throat> We've also previously proposed a six foot Stockade fence, final stockade fence. There were concerns about the fence, maintenance of the fence, things of that nature. So what we propose to do is to install a four foot high chain link fence to provide a separation from the abutting properties to our property for, the, for safety concerns. And we provided a dense evergreen shrub, which <coughs> screened out a little bit. See a little more clearly on the planting plan. The proposal. So we've had a double row of staggered arborvitaes to be planted. We've confirmed with both the GeoWeb people as well as the geotechnical engineer that's been engaged for the project slopes that this would be a suitable planting for these slopes. They both confirm that there should be no issues with that. So what we're proposing is 143 arborvitae trees to be planted along this area to provide a visual screen. Now, the planning board, excuse me, the zoning boards, the zoning requirements are interesting to say the least with respect to this. The requirement is that at the time of planting, those trees would be three feet in height. So we've provided three to four foot um, three, excuse me, three to three and a half foot for what the proposed tree height would be at the time of planting. I believe it has to be seven feet within five years, which we're told that those arborvitae trees would reach. Um, so now there are some concerns and some comments that have been made with respect to the width of this screening and the plantings and their location on the slope, which we certainly recognize. But again, we're bound to comply with the bylaw which we believe we have. So what we're trying to do is, if you can imagine, we have a property line. We have within inches of the property line a proposed fence, and then we're providing a three to four foot space for those arborvitae trees, four, three to five foot space for the arborvitae trees to be planted from the fence so that they would have room to grow. So from the property line to the backside of the arborvitae trees is probably 11, 12 feet, 13 feet in that range. That area 
the green belt area, if you will, needs to be 15 feet in width. So the question now becomes, how do we plant right up against the fence to allow the tree to grow? What's the expanse of the tree going to be when it reaches maturity? Is it going to be the 15 feet? Uh, so what we're proposing, we think, as it matures, will provide a good visual screen for the abutters. And that is certainly our intent. Um, and we recognize that these trees, the further they're planted, you know, 15 feet, if you will, away from the property line, are going to be 15 feet below the property line elevation with the slope that's being proposed. So that's why we've tried to plant them there. The remainder of this slope will be planted with a conservation and wildflower mix on a loom base that's within the GeoWeb system itself. Just to, just to go over and kind of clarify uh, things with respect to that. Um, some other comments that have been brought up, and we can certainly go through all the comment letters if the board is so inclined. Uh, the town planner had also uh, mentioned uh, signage information has not been provided. There is no signage proposed at this time. There will be signage, and the applicant will come back to the design review board and the planning board as necessary to go over the signage. They just don't have anything at this time. They don't have their tenants secured. So there is no signage proposed at this time. I just wanted to clear that up. Um, did have an opportunity to talk to the town engineer uh, with regard to his comments, um, and then We've also had an opportunity to look at the beta comments, and they're somewhat hand in hand in that there's some concerns with the slope. So I can certainly go through that. Uh, I believe we have Mike Everhart on, the, on uh, Zoom, who is a representative of GeoWeb, who can certainly go through uh, some of the questions and concerns with respect <coughs> to the comments that have been brought up. Uh, yes. So, <clears throat> um, what I wanted to do, you know, before we really got into the specifics on the slope and brought Mike in, is kind of go through some of the other comments, um, if if the board would be so inclined. Sure. Um, so there were three comments with respect to zoning. I certainly don't want to speak for the building commissioner and or the town engineer, but I did have a conversation with Amy today and the building commissioner, and I believe the zoning issues have been resolved with respect to conformance of the letter that Mr. Genta's attorney has sent to the town. Uh, Amy, if there's any issues, certainly. You can. No, I, I did receive a letter today um, confirming from our building commissioner that um, I can just quickly read. As, as far as the zoning is concerned, Franklin Flex conforms with all zoning bylaws. The property predates all changes related to the lot death in life. It is considered pre-existing nonconforming. So, and I have that satisfactory from building commissioner and the town attorney. That is correct. Good. Thank you. Thank you. So, with respect to um, Beta's comment SP1 light spillage, we're proposing some light spillage in and around the area here at the entrance. Um, and it's basically light spillage that was, will go on to the power company property and, and at the entrance area. There's no light spillage proposed to the residences, but we have requested a waiver from that. And again, I don't want to speak for beta. They don't seem to have an issue, but it's something that the board ultimately is going to have to render an opinion on. So I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, another another item that's you know kind of been back and forth. Um, and again, we understand that. Uh, Mr. James has come on board kind of in the middle of this project. Um, we had the previous review consultant from Beta involved. And the relevance of that is at the first public hearing we had it for this project, there was certainly concerns about another similar type of project to this in town and the lack of parking that they had. So the board at that time tasked us with trying to increase the parking and making sure that we had adequate parking. And we do have parking in excess of what's needed. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that we couldn't scale back the parking. What we're proposing to do is to evaluate this as the project's being developed and if there's an opportunity to minimize the parking, we could certainly come back to the board and have that discussion. But at this time, the applicant would like the most amount of flexibility in the rental of the spaces and, and have the additional parking. 
Um, I know there are some concerns with respect to the parking and the impacts to the downgrading and wetland <laughs> buffer zone. As I mentioned earlier, the Conservation Commission has issued their permit. So I think it's fair to say that they're satisfied with the parking stormwater system and the, and the buffer zone impacts and mitigation. I would like to point out we do not have the permit from the Conservation Commission as of yet, but there were special conditions that they want us to add some additional plantings that were not originally proposed on the gr down gradient mm -hmm. slope area to provide for some, some mitigation for the amount of impervious within the, within the buffer zone. So uh, that will be forthcoming on a change once we receive that permit from them. So certainly an opportunity, but again, the applicant would prefer to have as much parking as he could and something that we can evaluate as the project goes on. Mm -hmm. um, the screening and planting, I think I've talked about. Obviously, Beta brought up some concerns with respect to the, to the, to the 15 foot width. Um, some clarity can be brought to that section of the bylaw as to exactly what that 15 foot green belt needs to be planted with. Is the conservation of wildflower adequate or do we need to, you know, just mulch, put a mulch type, you know, surface on the whole thing and have 15 feet of plants? I don't think that's the intent. I think the intent is to screen it. And again, I've given you the reasons why we did what we did, but we're certainly willing to, to listen if the planning board has some some ideas with respect to that. Um, <clears throat> there was a utility note um, that was not revised, and basically what that was was to offset the concerns that the board had with respect to the underground propane tanks. The applicant has proposed to remove the tanks from the site, and a connection to the, to the gas system will be made in Washington Street. Unfortunately, there was a note indicating that the gas tanks would still be on the site that has since been revised. Um, there was a comment, a new comment added, SW7A, which was um, greatly appreciated and certainly on our radar. Um, oops, sorry, I had the right one. And that comment was a concern of breakout from the stormwater basins to the to the relatively close slopes, uh, and we acknowledge that those um, basins are within close proximity to the slope. We have talked to the geotechnical engineer uh, with respect to that, and they certainly plan on having some type of barrier there. The exact design has not been finalized yet, and I will get to that. Um, I just, I don't want to jump around, but we certainly appreciate that comment, um, and it's certainly something that we're planning to do. Um, and then lastly, we had provided hydrocat analysis for the stormwater bypass, if in fact this catch basin uh, located on Washington Street within the town layout uh, did not function and all of the stormwater came into the site, what would happen? Um, Beta has simply asked for an update of the watershed plan to show you know, what the extents of the watershed are so that they could evaluate the, the watershed and the surface types uh, of the areas within the watershed. Basically, you know, we have the watershed boundary that existed for the site, so it will pick up from that point and come to the center line of the road. It'll pick up at a catch basin that's located about 14 or 15 feet south of this driveway, and then down to that point there. So we have that watershed plan prepared. Unfortunately, we were not able to submit it in time. So I think, um, Getting back to the slopes, which is really, you know, uh, a big issue um, from everybody's point of view, um, I want to bring everyone up to speed. We've submitted a letter from the project's geotechnical engineer, um, which was Summit uh, Geoengineering Services. Uh, Matt Harrison is the engineer who prepared that. He's worked with the engineers for the GeoWeb system. So just to differentiate, what the geotechnical engineers have been brought in for is to look at the underlying soils. What the GeoWeb system is basically is a surface stabilization system, just yep. in, in general terms. Um, that's what we're looking at. So the surface system is going to treat 
how to stabilize that area and you know allow for the vegetation to be planted and, and to grow if you will and then the geotechnical engineer is more concerned with the stability of the slope and you know how the impacts of the parking area stormwater systems will have on the down gradient slope so as we've typically done in the past with projects that would have a retaining wall you know we've shown the wall we've got some preliminary input from the structural engineers with respect to the wall but the nuts and bolts and the final design of the wall is handled at a later date so we're trying to take that same approach here because we want to make sure we have the parking nailed down we have all the project components nailed down before we engage a full design of of the um, the slopes so what we wanted to do was to have the board understand that we've had those discussions that the geotechnical engineers feel they have all the tools in their toolbox that will allow for a stabilized slope this is a one-to-one -one slope a 45 degree angle slope and we have the surface treatment on it which I'd like Mike Everhart to to comment on but before I turn it over to that. There was one comment that was brought to my attention um, by Karen um, at the Conservation Commission Marin, uh, meeting. We had an opportunity to talk with her in the hallway. And as a concern, and she was absolutely correct, and I really appreciate you pointing it out, um, we had noted on the site plan that there's a 40 mile an hour speed limit approaching the site in this direction, basically head south heading north. 30 mile an hour speed limit in the opposite direction when in fact there's a 30 mile an hour speed limit sign at the bridge for people heading towards the center of town and there's a 40 mile an hour speed limit sign at the bridge in the other direction that I, I you know I didn't see I mean when we were out there in October you know we traversed the street we looked there's a 40 mile an hour sign down at at the intersection of Washington and King, just up a few hundred feet from that that we saw, that's what gave us the indication that it was 40. So basically from the 495 bridge to the center of town, it's 30 from the 495, 495 bridge heading to the south towards King and Washington's intersection, um, it's 40 miles an hour. So we've updated the speed limit at 40 miles an hour with a 6% downgrade roadway would require about 333 feet of stopping site distance. The site plan has always shown a 400 foot site distance triangle, so we still exceed that, but we certainly want to have the correct numbers on the plan. So um, we've also provided you with response comments to, to concerns that the, com that the planning board had brought up as well. You know, for instance, uh, Ms. Werling had brought up a comment that we could add the days of week that the hours of operation would coincide with that's been added mr. chairman you would request an advance warning sign for the intersection that's been added with the caveat that we're able to obtain permission from the DPW to install that sign within their roadway we'd certainly be willing to do it we just again need to mm -hmm. get to that point I think it's a good idea um, I think you know uh, mr. David's concerns with respect to the snow removal and the tanks that were echoed by some of the other members were well received and we've made those changes so I think we've tried to listen to everything and we've tried to incorporate everything and I just like Mike to be able to give the board a little overview of the geo web system and the stability that 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 will afford the project sure. thank you thank you okay it, can I go you can go, you can go. all right so my name is Mike Everhart I'm a, the erosion control and stormwater specialist for EJ Prescott, and uh, I am certified in, in installing and training for installation on uh, by Presto Geosystems, which is manufactured for GeoWeb. I've been involved in numerous projects utilizing GeoWeb on steep, extreme slopes and getting vegetation established on those slopes. Um, in fa fact, we've done quite a few that are even greater than one to one. Um, the GeoWeb system is exactly what Rick was saying, is a system designed to help contain the topsoil in there for surface erosion and allowing it um, 
the time to get your vegetation established and your root structure back into the slope. So once it's vegetated, you don't really see the system. There is no maintenance of the system. It is just a, a hardcore, heavy protection system on that slope. It is also designed, it's perforated and it's designed to allow water to flow through it um, while it's still containing all that, uh, the topsoil and not allowing it to go anywhere. So it's a, it's a great system. It's, it was developed for the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, it's been around for a long time and it's something that uh, works. So I'm here to answer any questions and be in any assistance that I can. <coughs> Start with the board first. If anybody has any comments to Rick's and or the stabilization uh, assemblies. Oh. Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, we do have a couple pictures. Of the I was going to ask if you had any that were. We, we did hand them out to the engineers, figuring that would yep. save them. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I was only yep. given three. Yeah. To kind of get a feel for what I think we succeeded. They're both smiling. <laughs> That's hate, Rick. <laughs> Left out. Um, we, we had submitted some information, but they did sure. provide us with some pictures. We do have the ability to show the border, uh, you know, a little video, if you will, but I don't, I'm not sure it's necessary. It's certainly up to the board. Um, okay. Um, we'll go to the audience first. That being said, if anybody from the audience has anything to say, just going to just approach the mic. Give your name and address, please. Hi, I'm uh, this. Okay. Hi, I'm uh, Paul Harrington. I live at uh, I'm at about 241 Washington Street. So at the initial map, I'm at the southern edge there of the uh, property. Uh, so I mean, with respect to Rick and the team, I mean, I know that I can want to acknowledge the effort that they're putting into making this project work. However, I mean, the concerns I think, as as noted, are slope. Right, slope is a huge concern. And Mike may be able to answer this question. Mr. Everhart may be able to answer this. Um, but it sounds like this, the, the GeoWeb handles surface stability, whereas there's also uh, a concern with deep-seated stability here, seeing that the slope is at a 45-degree angle. Uh, so I wanted to see if, if maybe, I don't know if that's something that Mike could address. Uh, the other, my only other concern is just the overall scope of the project. It does seem like it is uh, larger in scope than the, than the uh, sort of the parcel that is planned to be developed on. And that seems like uh, a, a <coughs> just a lot of risk, uh, especially for the area. Uh, it is a heavily wooded area. They, you know, there's a lot of natural habitats there. There's trails. Uh, so it's just it's it's upsetting to see such a, a, a piece of the community be uh, just overdeveloped. Uh, the other last uh, item I wanted to ask about was the uh, the uh, width in the lot parameter. It sounds like that was considered exempt from the bylaws. However, that uh, was, if I understand correctly, the bylaw was created in 1998, and this property was just purchased within the last few years for this development project. Uh, so if that's the case, I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to how any, uh, any project would ever actually fit into that bylaw if they're all just, if, if, if since most properties are here, are older than 1998. Uh, so again, those are all my concerns, uh, and thank you for your time. Anybody else? In the <coughs> I didn't make Karen Miller to 46 Washington Street. And I really appreciate you mentioned that we talked to them after the conservation committee and to the chair. I appreciate all the work that you all have done as town planner. I've learned so much on this project. I also appreciate them talking to the neighbors, trying to un explain things that go on. And in, um, the other neighbor mentioned the that's, you've heard me say that before, that's very important. We don't want to see the neighbor's houses fall into the project. Neither do they. They don't either. One of the important things, I don't believe there's been a traffic study done for this project. And um, not that it is their responsibility at all, but the traffic there, the reason I caught the speed limit on the traffic is on a daily basis. Franklin police sit right across the street from there because the speed people do not obey the speed limit. And they try very hard. There's a huge presence for them there, Franklin Fleet. But um, it, 
was one of the things that I had mentioned to them too. It's not their fault people speed on the road, but they do. And the visibility coming in and out of there and um, having, you know, if it's <coughs> landscapers pulling a truck, pulling a trailer, coming down that steep incline, what's coming out of there. So I, I would really like the board to consider anything that can be done in that area or anything that we can do. You know, like when we talk to the Franklin police about is there a speed limit? Can we bring the speed limit down to 30 on the whole road? As he mentioned, it's 40. It doesn't stop people from going faster. I get that. That's not your job, not my job. But it's 30 from Union Street to the 495 bridge. Then it goes 40, I believe, right on to the, the light there, right? And the hours of operation is going to be contiguous to, you know, the schools and um, people going to work. And on that section of Washington Street, you're adding 135, whatever I'm going by, parking spaces at that same, you know, whatever, 7 to 9 time frame in the afternoon. It's the same time frame everybody is on that street. During the day, of course, there's cars, but it's very, it's less frequent. So um, just a thought to them on that, anything that they can do to mitigate that. And it's one of the things on the plan, I'm sorry, town engineers and everything, <coughs> like their entrance to the plan is um, on a right of way for property that they don't own. And um, the, you know, like you look at the plan, it was one of the questions I had before. They're entering the property on a right of way for property they don't own and how much flexibility will they have to do things there that are needed underneath the high tension wires because it's under them. And so what I mean is like putting up trees, putting up guardrails, doing things that will protect the area because it is underneath high tension wires. Um, and lastly, I would, I would just like to ask if the board does see fit to pass the project in any way, if we could have um, a limited site plan for each tenant come before the board under general business so that you know once they get their tenants established, if they can come to the board with a tenant list and the, and the board approve the tenant list um, and each individual tenant as they go forward to ensure the safety of the wetlands and the neighborhood. We all we all very much know by now it's a residential neighborhood. <clears throat> you know, one of a kind in the area, kind of thing in the middle of it. Above a water resource area, or in a water resource area, above um, all these wetlands, and I think it becomes important who the tenants are. And if we could, if I could respectfully ask for the board to look for um, a limited site plan for each tenant that comes in there, that would be appreciated. Thank you so much for everything. I appreciate it. Thank you. How are you doing? It's weird on this side. So. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Delaco, 7 Wilson Row. Um, I definitely do think that we have to do something with the traffic down there. I mean, obviously, I mean, nobody knows more that we can use the tax revenue than me, absolutely. But. Um, what, what I'm scared about is not just say that project, but you got another project coming up on King Street. So obviously, if that happens, now we're going to have more traffic coming down Washington Street, and then we're going to have to put lights down on the corner of Washington and Union, and that's going to cost the town a lot of money. Not necessarily. I think these people have worked great with the with the community. I think that that you know that their their best interest is with the community. So I do appreciate that, and you guys been just throwing, uh, throwing that out there just for you guys to think about, you know, in the long term. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody on Zoom? No? <coughs> Rick, what's your uh, line of sight looking left up the hill? You said it was adequate for 40? Yeah, we, we, we stopped at 400 feet. And that was, that's adequate for 40, right? It was 40, like 395? 333 with the adjustment for 6% downgrade. Yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> speak a little bit on 
to speak a little bit on when it comes to traffic enforcement, because this is unfortunately part of what I do professionally outside of here. Um, I think someone said it earlier. We can have all the line of sight in the world here. We can sign this to 40. We can do everything. Um, I don't work with the police here anymore. It's a traffic enforcement issue. If we want people to go slower on any road in town, there is nothing Mike or can do about it. It is entirely up to the police to enforce it. So I would uh, caution against us limiting development along a road like this when there's adequate things from an engineering standpoint when it comes to line of sight and uh, design of the roadway when um, nothing that could be done to this driveway or the design of the roadway will cause people to slow down. They need to get pulled over. Question. No, no, I. That that question's fine, but you uh, had Karen's a, question. Was a comment about the entrance yeah, and I about just, working with the police. Exactly. With I just okay. wanted to to bring the board up to speed yeah. with respect to that. Sure. There's been comments with respect to the driveway being within the 50 foot right of way. So just to clarify, former railroad layout is shown here. The driveway entrance will be off of Washington Street onto the applicant's property. It will then traverse to the west and then turn north, and that will go within the right-of-way that was granted by the power company back to this property at the time the power company took that property uh, for the purposes of the transmission line. We have, I have, and the applicant has had discussions with the power company. I spoke with the engineering and right-of-way people with respect to separation to the poles, things of that nature, grading, etc. The applicant's attorney, has been dealing with the power company's attorney, and we're, we're awaiting a final approval from them. They have the site plans. We're just waiting for that. Obviously, if there's an issue and we have to come back, we would come back. We don't anticipate anything. We vetted this out with them. Many meetings, many sketches, many things. They seem to be happy, but nothing's a guarantee. But I just wanted the, the board to understand that. Thank you. Um, I apologize if I missed this at a prior meeting, but I just want to understand the, the parking um, because it was increased at, at some point. Um, depending on who the tenants end up being and what the use of the buildings ends up being, if I'm reading this correctly, it would either be a, say, minimum of 68 spaces required, but a maximum of potentially 125 spaces required based on the use and how the square footage is maximized. So I guess my question is, can you limit it to 125 spaces instead of the 144 proposed that in, so that 19 space differential just to keep the impervious area, you know, down to minimum while still allowing maximum flexibility, not knowing who the tenants are, um, but designing to the uh, highest uh, possible amount of required spaces, but not beyond that. Yes, we, we certainly could do that. You know, what we were hoping to do was as the first building, you know, comes up and becomes available for space, we can evaluate that, what we're getting for tenants, what we foresee that used to be, and then we could make adjustments as we move further into the site with the parking, with, you know, dialogue from the board that, you know, maybe you could put a condition in that we reevaluate when the first building is operational and come in and have another discussion about parking and if any amendments could be made. We certainly don't want to box ourselves in. We certainly listen to the concerns with respect to the other um, 
other unit. But you know, I will say there's 27 spaces in these buildings, so 68 to me is less than two and a half per unit. That doesn't seem to be adequate. So we're not, we understand how zoning is and the different scenarios. We feel more in the range of five per unit would be more adequate with some spaces obviously not requiring five and some potentially requiring more. So we think a good average would be five, which would put us right in that 125 range. Right, I guess what I'm saying is, is, is I totally understand the flexibility and not wanting to limit it to 68, not knowing what the uses are going to be. But I guess I don't, I don't understand. I, I don't understand why it would have to be beyond what the maximum required would ever be based on the square footage. Like to start at 125 at the high and possibly reduce down rather than the other way around, rather than starting at 144. Well, again, we don't know what the tenants are going to be, so we're trying to maximize the flexibility. This is, you know, the, the scenario we came up with, listening to some of the other concerns. You know, zoning, just because the zoning bylaw has that as a breakdown doesn't mean, you know, that that's what the applicant feels could be needed. So, you know, we, quite frankly, we don't know the exact number. If we did, we'd propose it. Yeah. You know, we're, we're kind of in an area where we're trying to come up with something and not box ourselves in. We certainly can have a discussion tonight about specific spaces not being constructed if not needed, you know, if that's something the board would feel more comfortable with. Um, we certainly don't want to pave and curb and create more impervious surface than we need to. We just, quite frankly, don't know mm -hmm. how the operations of the site are really going to work mm -hmm. until the tenants are secure. Mm -hmm. So we, we certainly appreciate it. This is one of those struggles. I mean, I, you know, I just sat here and listened to all the concerns about not enough parking on another project, and I, and I understand that. I'm not trying to, you know, here we have the ability to create more parking, but there's certainly environmental concerns that go along with that. Right. So there's a balance. I, I, I appreciate that, and mm -hmm. I don't know the answer. I wish I did. But, <laughs> so thank you for the comment, and, you know, we're, we're happy to listen. You know, if that's what the board's so inclined for, we take 19 spaces and you know, we'll turn them into to landscaping. And, you know, maybe that's the answer. We have the ability to do it in the future. Mm -hmm. Our proposal would be to evaluate it as we move into the project with, you know, coming back to the board after the first building is constructed. We're going to be here looking for a partial Form H. be a perfect opportunity to update you on what we have for tenant spaces and parking demand. If we feel we're lower, we may be able to ask for a waiver to get even lower than that. But we've shown that we can do it. So we could always come back in if the right tenant comes along to take one whole building with X amount of parking spaces. You know, we just have that flexibility. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you. A couple of questions. Um, Rick, I don't seem to have a lighting plan for some reason. And you're, the waiver you're asking for um, is asking for a waiver for lighting just on the area where it's you're on your easement. Correct. And this, e this area up here, yes. There's no spillage on the abutting residential properties. So if that waiver is something that comes up when we're, if it goes to the point of voting for that waiver, then um, could you make that waiver can something along the lines of only waiving that particular area of light spillage? Yes. I think Beta did a very nice job in explaining, in explaining it in their it. comment if you okay. wanted to look at that language. Yep. Um, and, and which I'm now trying to look for. Um, <clears throat> Beta's comment number three states the light spillage is limited to a portion of the vacant lot owned by NE Power Company at the front of the lot. Beta notes that the requested waiver appears reasonable and defers to the preference of the board. So if yep. the board wanted a waiver that the light spillage can only occur on the NE Pro New England Power Company property, mm -hmm. We'd be amenable to that. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And then you talk about the green belt. You had mentioned that you could give a little more detail on that. You, was there a question about what should be in the green belt for the plantings, or did yes. I hear you right? Yes. So <clears throat> uh, the bylaw uh, section 18535C. Um, states at the bottom portion, the first portion states about being in an industrial zone and abutting residential. So I'm not, which is extremely confusing to me, um, and to Gus, because in Moxarell as well. Um, but unfortunately, I, they didn't 
see it the way I saw it. So here we are. Um, so re regardless, it states such green belt shall consist of an area not less than 15 feet wide containing a dense grouping of trees and shrubs providing a natural barrier between the lot and the adjacent premises. The trees and shrubs shall have a height of not less than three feet initially and shall be, <coughs> excuse me, expected to have an effective height of not less than seven feet within five years. Mm -hmm. So what we were basically proposing was an area of arborvitaes. Now you have to understand that that's on the slope. Right. So down the, the further down the slope, 15 feet down the slope, we're 15 feet in elevation below the slope. So a three foot arborvitae isn't gonna provide much screen. So we tried to push them as far up the slope towards the property line as we could, but keeping in mind we don't want the arborvitae trees right up against the fence and we can't have the fence right at the property line. So there's a little flexibility in this 15 feet that we're looking for to offset the fence from the property line and then offset the first row of trees from the fence. And then what we tried to do was stagger the trees so that as they do grow up, it's gonna provide a nice full screen. That's, that's our intent. But again, it's not you know, the 15 feet on the, on the downside. But those areas are intermixed with that conservation of wildflower grass seed mixture, which is not a mowed mixture. It's something similar to you, uh, that you would see on the highway, on steep embankments on a highway, flowering things, some, some wildlife values. Was that down here, is this what your cross section is down in the bottom there? That's correct, okay. yes. Yep. And if, and if the abutters are amenable, we uh, you should see planting the arborvitaes on their side of the fence. They so wanted. If we just can't propose to do it on their land without they say so. So, you know, we're trying to provide the best screen we can. Mm -hmm. It's just the bylaw gives us the guidance. You know, the GeoWeb system doesn't allow for us to plant 20 foot sure. tall trees with enormous root balls through the web system. Understood. We can yeah. put them in as smaller trees and they can grow up. That, that opening is just under, it's about 11 inches, 11 and a half inches. Yeah, I've actually uh, uh, worked on projects that have used the Geo the web system. project. It's actually pretty cool. I would yeah. imagine there could be some at the stadium. Yep, it works. It definitely works. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so this is phased construction then? Well, what, yes, so sequencing. sequencing. Okay, so what? So we did an extensive sequence for the project, you know, to show, you know, building one, parking area, stormwater area, building two, and then building three area, if you will. That, that's, and then there's a sequence How spelled long? out. They're individual units for approximately 20. So, you know, we propose that to minimize the amount of disturbance to the to the uh, to the site as we were going through the construction, so that we could, you know, build it in sequences. So um, understanding there's a sequence, um, and unfortunately. I don't have glasses and I can't see it too well. But you, <laughs> I can bring you the big ones if you want to read them. <laughs> but, I still have um, trouble. So in all, how long do you intend that sequence to take? Start Approximately to six months for each, each building. Each building. It's six to eight. Mm -hmm. We have to, we have to, you know, it's part of its financing as well, to be honest. We, mm -hmm. we have a certain amount of occupancy. The first one, we're pretty confident we have what's necessary at this time for our just waiting for us to get to be able to get in there. Uh, but, you know, we have to have 70%, we move to the next one, 70% we move to the next one. And we'll, we'll, we've done feasibility studies for this, and they've, they've all read at least out you know, in theoretically pretty much immediately for this do need. Do you theory. anticipate there any chance that this building, will, all three will not be completed, or do you anticipate oh, no, them all being all completed? Be completed. I, I, mm -hmm. I, unless something disastrous takes place, One and a half to two years. Yeah, one and a half, one and a half to two years. Okay. Yeah. Understood. 
Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> I'm good. Rick, all the answers. Um, I just had a couple quick ones. Um, on the on the uh, stabilization mat, is it possible to create a level landing or a level plateau at the top of it to put the trees in so you're not fighting? You know, can you get a four, four to five, an eight, six foot flat area at the top of the hill? Then? Well, there's a buffer zone. There's a 50 foot buffer strip. If, <coughs> if we could put our plantings in there, then there would be. I know you pinch. That's why I'm wondering because of the height of the tree in the in the right in the slope of the hill. Do, right. Can you incorporate somewhat of a level landing within that well, first portion of the slope at the at the it, peak of it? It would vary. You know. So what we did was we pulled the slope back here. <coughs> provide for access around the building you know if in fact an emergency vehicle or emergency personnel needed to get back there we were trying to maximize the space particularly in these turn-ins that the fire department had requested mm -hmm. and so you can see they pinched away from the building and now we could certainly pull that in and, and do that in certain areas but you know we have tight area here we have a tighter area here yeah. it was just a thought cause yeah. I know you're Yep. squeeze for space um, well, we're, again we're trying to balance that sure. rear access yeah. to to right. that it's a great idea yeah. and we could we could look at that um approximately how many lineal feet are we talking for the stabilization it's probably 900 feet it's about 900 feet 900 feet okay that's on the paper all the time yeah okay um i guess you went to zoning for, for uh, gravel removal. Approximately how many yards are you talking? Uh, we were granted a permit for 16,000. We were 15 and change. Okay. Now, when you start this gravel removal, what's your stabilization? What are you going to do to stabilize this hill when you start carving into it before this is installed? What are, you, what are your plans to maintain that slope so it doesn't flush out? So, you know, we have obviously a plan to excavate this area and create that plateau and in the road control we have you know provisions for installing additional road control at the top of those slopes you know while they're under construction those slopes it's need to be a period of time before it's all put together that's what correct I feel that comes like five foot wide uh, 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 strips if you will so we could be removing and installing the System. You know what I'm getting to. Correct. Some period we, of time. Yeah. We're very conscientious of yeah. needing to get that so geo web system in, infilled. We have a hydro seed mix. We've worked with Mike Everhart, and he can probably talk a little more about it, about some of the admixtures to the to the hydro seed mix that'll provide for temporary stabilization of that slope while it's being done. Yeah, we, I'm just thinking you just don't want to clear cut the whole thing and then, then no, 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 you're going to have to work it as you're as that's, you're. Okay. We, you know, that's why there's segments to this. There's okay. three segments, you know, so we're yep. coming to here with this piece of slope. That's under segment one, yep. and that'll be stabilized, spray, you know, okay. constructed just, state. Just for make sure it's uh, sprayed. Yep. yep. And then as you're talking about uh, sequencing and whatnot, obviously the drainage system will have, have to be up and operational for the whole site, I even though buildings two and three aren't um, constructed yet. So just take that into consideration. So, you know, what we, what we have, ponds one and two being constructed in the first phase as well as the second. Phase two is really just a building. Yeah. But, and then, yeah, yeah. Yep. and then the infrastructure is this last pond here with this building and, mm -hmm. and that paving. So, so two of the three ponds will be built in the first phase and they will accommodate everything for buildings one and two. And then we can, okay. uh, that's our plan is to not get down and build Pond 3 until we get into Section 3. Okay. So I just want to point that out. Uh, Mike, but does that it, make sense? It, it it is. Is. Okay. It's, so as they do the uh, sequencing of the construction along, you know, when they go to get the opening of the, the partial formage for that first building, all the infrastructure for that building relative to any drainage needs to be installed and operational before they start moving down. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So the, <coughs> These two trench drains behind buildings one and two tie into pond two. Okay. So that needs to be operational for yep. building one okay. to be done. Um, 
Thank you. And I just had, um, well, there was a comment about a limited site plan per tenant unit. Would you be objective to come in? It was a good, it was a very valid point about being in the water resource. So uh, basically, just come back and, and, uh, and just letting us know who's going to be occupying that space. You're in the water resource district. We don't know if they bring chemicals in or any kind of uh, solvents. To, that's you. something to protect the, the water resource area is well, what we, we Yeah, just so. That on the condition. I mean, if someone has a by right use, mm. I don't know what the board has as a power to tell someone that you can't put a by right use in there. That is not any place that we want to go. Um, I, I, I think, Mr. Chairman, if I may, it would, it, would it make sense to have a letter of the tenant and their use be brought to the building commissioner who oversees the zoning and make sure that there's a compli compliance yeah. as well as yep. the water resource district yep. not to, no, to no, take the board's time? before, I think, just to protect yep. water resource areas yes. to make sure nothing else. I, I mean, the like tenants that. have a very extensive lease. Sure. that we've provided a copy of to the board at the beginning stages. I know it's been some time and there's new members, um, but that outlined prohibitions. We're very sensitive to the Water Resource sure. District. And furthermore, it was brought up by Bader, and it was a very good point, that if we were to have some of these uses with chemicals, et cetera, we'd have to have a stormwater system that was designed to comply with the land use under higher potential pollutant loads, which we do not. So we cannot allow those and have a compliant stormwater okay. system. And the reason for that is, is they're not allowed in the water resource district. So it's kind of a yeah, just, I'm natural I'm just asking fit. the question to make yeah. sure we're, we're crossing yeah, the T's and dotting the I's. I, I just, yep. I'm, I'm fine with the building commissioner uh, All right, great. crossing that as well. Yep. Anybody else on the? Can I just ask one quick? Sure. Sorry, just one quick clarification question, and I'm, I apologize if I misheard or, but you said the um, site distance was 400 feet site distance, and that would be pulling out of the property, looking to the left, coming down Washington. Is it the same distance coming from the right? So if you're gonna take a left out of a property, I believe the site distance is much more restricted um, because there's like that house that's kind of close to the road in the corner and such. So I, I, I totally believe it's 400 feet from one direction. I think that's only coming from one direction. I don't think it's from the other, just for clarification. Give him a second. He's going to be going in the other direction. So coming out of the site, looking towards the intersection of King and Washington Street, the, the stopping site distance was 300 feet. Now that's a 3% upgrade. So that had a distance of 289 feet. So it's adequate. Required. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. I have a, I have, just have a quick question. Going back so, to the signage, um, I know you have to go for that, but um, are you thinking of just one sign out front stating that it's Franklin Flex LLC, or you're going to have each individual tenant? I think, I think one, no. one sign out front saying it's 275 Washington Street. Whatever. That's it. Just a, going to be. And then as you enter and head toward the uh, underpass, after you clear the uh, national grid lines, right they in will this have area. individual tenants. Building so they'll be on the building. building, B, building C, yeah. on the property. So. No, you you wanted a, a sign board that has so you know placards yeah. that say you know unit one is. Yeah, yeah, but that wouldn't building. be on the street. It would be. But that's that's what I was getting at. So further down. You're just going to have an, an, an address sign on the street. At Correct. The, at yeah, the yeah, Franklin Flex Base 270 Washington Street okay. out the front. And then that sign board would be, you know, somewhere in this area right here is what we're looking at. Which is on your property. Which is, yes. Right. So the easement and the power company property is here. Just as we came past that, as you're entering into decision of where to park, that okay. you'd, you'd be able to see that. That's our, our plan. Oh, I'm fine with that. Thank you. Turn the chair. So I know you... Oh. Rick, Rick, I guess one more question. You don't, you don't have the signs determined at this time 
But are you going to show the location of where you might want the signs at all? or are you We, we were going to wait until wait. we actually have them so we know the size right. and the mass of them. I don't, you know, we don't know. So if it, I don't want to show something that's three feet and it's ten feet. Potential condition that you'll need to yep. go through no, the proper channel. We're fine with that. that we'll come back. Okay. Yep. yep. I guess uh, so. I think I'm good. Anybody else? Uh, everybody good? So, sounds like made some good progress. And um, when do you think you'll be able to, to press forward with Beta's comments and Mike's comments? And <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I think we've addressed most of the comments. I think we've left it up to the board that we do we have analysis you wait for. Balance of it, or I have. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. From uh, Miss Jim, from my from my standpoint, and my uh, the last remaining comment that was what we had talked about before was about the uh, slopes and everything. And as Rick had mentioned, they um, they have a geotechnical engineer um, that's working on a final design for the slope stabilization. Um, it, it'd be ideal if that was done before the uh, any approval was given by the board. But just like we've done on other projects where you condition the approval uh, on the design of a structural wall, on a retaining wall, things like that. It could be handled the same way there too. I would like to, if, if it was conditioned that way, it'd be good to have that um, approved, you know, finally designed and uh, submitted Before prior to any construction starting. Um, Absolutely. That, yep. that, and then the only other comment I had made um, in those areas where they're dealing right up against the uh, property line at the top of that slope, it might be worth having that slope at uh, the top of the, pro the property line at the top of the slope staked out like every 100 feet so they know they're not encroaching onto a private property at that point. Mm -hmm. Those are my only other two comments. Yeah, and we have no issues with that. Okay. And I think that takes, you know, I don't want to speak for beta, but I think that's <laughs> part of their big concern is the slope and the stormwater. We're certainly going to propose, if the board was agreeable, that that would be a condition. We can provide that design for review once completed if the board was so inclined. Uh, we're not opposed to that. We just don't want to make that jump. Yep. But we do have... The geotechnical people telling us that they have the ability to make to get this work to work. I have one, one other well, quick question. I think this would probably go to you, Amy, addressing the um, the speed limit. Um, do we do you go? Can we go to the to the police and you know as as Karen Miller said about the you know maybe reducing the speed? I mean, there's, we already know there's an issue there because she said they're already doing radar. I mean, so, if the board wants to write a letter to the police to do that, you can do so, but we're not going to make any, it's not going to, it's not really related to the site plan itself because it's not going to change the site plan itself. No, right, right. But I'm, so I'm just, you know, recommendation wants to be written to the plan, by the, from the planning board to the police to scope yeah, out that. Yeah. And I can draft a letter. To, to yeah. actually change the speed limit, the town would need to conduct for the MUTCD a traffic study. Right. Okay. So probably, so then, there's then probably a lot more involved. to the town than, council. So. And just doing so, you know, you town to council should get involved. Yeah. I mean, you know, if it's a concern with the neighbors or the abutters, you know, I mean, they haven't even done anything yet, and there's an issue there. So, uh, you know, uh, or even the abutters address the police department saying, I mean, again, they already know because they're there doing speed traps. So. Okay, so maybe we we'll just do a letter. If you could draft a letter to <coughs> Just address it that way, because I I knew that way back. That's why I said I wanted some signage well, from the very correct. beginning. Correct. Correct. You brought um, that up, Mr. Chairman, asking for some some advance warning signage, yeah, and we took yeah, that into consideration. Move along down that. Unfortunately, hill. we can't control the speed limit. The yep. traffic is impossible to control. Yep. Right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. But a hundred dollar ticket will control it. But <laughs> even then, you you can't put unless Franklin comes up with a dedicated traffic division. We're not going to we don't have yeah. a half dozen cruises that we can just go park all over town and pull people over all day. It's it's a brutal issue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, now okay. yeah, I can we, I'm trying not to get pulled over when I leave here. Can we, um, <laughs> can we at least request that they um, that we revisit or uh, parking at each phase of the pro project is completed based on the anticipated Tenants, because I think the last thing on the site that anyone wants, based on the location and the watershed area, and what, or being in a water resource district, is that we overbuild impervious area. Um, so I think coming back at each so phase and yeah, uh, I mean we, we would come in for a it. partial form H yeah. to occupy building one. That to me would be the ideal time to talk about the parking. Yeah, because we'll know where we're at if we're at seventy percent or more at least at that point. At least 
you know, that block. Now we may come back and say, hey, we got another tenant that needs 20 spaces, but that's the dialogue we have come, come you know, we can come back and have with the board. So I, we, you know, we're amenable to that. Update the plans so, to revoke the Conservation Commission okay. comments. Yep. So it sounds like yep. we're really close, and maybe just fine tune everything for the next meeting, and then we can uh, clean it up. And you maybe can go to yeah, I mean, on I, the next meeting. If yeah, we whatever. have room on the February seventh meeting. Um, I think it's important that there were a lot of kind of conditions set tonight by the board that I would like to take some time to write them up for the next meeting. Um, board can take a look at them in advance. We come. Do what they want with them, um, and so that can get all together in the next letter for the next meeting. And, and then you had some adjustments. The, some of the final. I think one of the things um, in question this this 15 foot um, green belt, but we don't know if it's going to be 15 because it might be 12, it might be 10. I understand that you might want a waiver for that. That minimum of 10, um, if you can't make that 15, so that might. Well, the question is, is what's the area planted with? You know, the shrubs, the trees, the grass. I mean, what, mm -hmm. what counts? I mean, do you want 15 feet? If we put a tree in that's going to grow to 15 feet, does that count? You know, and I'm not asking you right. the question. That, that's mm -hmm. the question is how do we interpret All what right, that well, 15 I feet is? Something I, I've seen other bylaws in a neighboring town to the, to the north of here who specifically say there cannot be anything within that 15 feet except mm -hmm. for a pedestrian sidewalk, an entrance driveway, but you cannot have parking and things of that nature. I'm, I don't want to make that leap, but I think the intent there is that that is a planted area. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, you know, we certainly can't put those trees an inch off the fence Correct. and expect them to survive. Right. So, okay. it's. I think, Rick, in looking what the bylaw says, I think it's pretty clear what can go in that 15 foot. Trees and trucks. Exactly what can go in there and how big they need to be. So if you need a waiver from it, then I would ask for a waiver. Okay. From no, it. no, we. I mean, again, we're trying to push them up as close as we can yeah. to the property line. But at the yeah. same time, being considerate of what you need to do in order to screen with the butters. So. But Correct. Again, it's on a hill and making it work. Right. Um, so. Before we continue, I just had one quick question. I thought I saw a note about rooftop units. No. Um, None. There are no well, rooftop units. Notes in either Beta's re responses about rooftop units. I thought they yeah, came. No, the response, no the response that we got so said that there were no rooftop units. Okay. So everything okay. would be okay. internal. It's within the, yeah. within everything the would be internal. Okay. Yeah. Now, what we did say is there may be some future solar as part of their requirements yeah. under Which the is building code, is it? State. State. So that could come, but there's no plans for any HVAC units or anything I of that nature. I thought they all went inside the building. Split. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We have okay. to have it available to be connected if it becomes a law that we have to be less. All right, so continue to the seventh work. Does that give you enough time to get everything? Yes. The plans redrawn? Yeah, I think, and we, I think we made a lot of progress. I think we have some just some cleanup things with, with Bader and, and Mike, and I think, you know, if the board's amenable to the slopes and we request a waiver to give a little flexibility to the planting, but yet we're meeting the spirit of the bylaw, which is what we're really trying to do. And it seems like, you know, obviously the board hasn't voted, but I think that's the, the direction we're being, yep. you know, directed to go in. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Motion to Make motion, motion to continue to oh. February 7th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Can we take a five minute break? Mm -hmm. or, then, uh, oh, did the 120 stuff get no, pushed? We have, we, we, did we, no, the last we have agenda cause. I didn't see any material on it, though. Yeah, I, I think the 120 So we just. We need a motion on 120. Yep. Constitution, they did finally send me a letter on Friday that they would like to, that they feel prepared, that they are ready to present some new stuff to us, and they would be ready for February 7th. <coughs> okay. So we'll continue we'll 120. Motion to continue 120 Constitution Boulevard to February 7th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.